Welcome back to the program. Now we're going to do our painting that we did earlier, the, the monochrome, the little cottage in the bog. We're now going to go full colour. Okay, now it's, that's just about ready. Here we go. I'm going to start off with raw sienna. I want to get this uh, down along the horizon line. Just a little touch of that. You don't want too much. And just very quickly get it in. That. Now, cleaning my brush, getting some ultramarine blue, and this time I'm going to just add a little bit of alizarin into that, get that nice purple colour. Now, very quickly get it on, don't worry too much about where it's going or anything like that. Just want to get it on real, real fast. That's it. That's my sky. Now we're going to start moving it around. And just bring it up nice and gently like this. And as you can see, the colors are mixing very well. Just turn it there. Now, like I said before, we don't want to try and replicate the skies or any of the paintings because that's almost impossible to do. Before we go any further, so I'm taking my blue again, going in here, and I'm taking a little bit more alizarin, get that big purple colour, lovely colour that. I want to try and get that sharper tones up here into the painting, to give it more depth into it. There we are. You could also add in just a little bit of the burnt sienna in there. What that does, it darkens down the whole painting at the top. Just gives it that little bit more, makes the sky a little bit more dramatic. Don't want it too dramatic though. Remember we said about the getting the cottage in. I want to just, if I put my brush flat like that and I push, you see I get all sorts of shapes there. Now, let's move that around and see what happens. Again, this is all moving nice and gently. Turn it. That's where we want it. Now, I'm going to leave this flat. I'm reasonably happy with that sky. So, just one more little bit there now. There go. Now. So that's my sky done there now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to dry this and then this time I'm going to draw the cottage for you with the pencil and then we'll work around it then, the bog and all the different colours. So I'm just going to dry this. Okay, that's our sky dried. Now this time, um, I'm not going to put the, the mountains in like I did the last time while it was still wet. I'll just do something different with it this time. Now, I'll just put that over that. Like that. Now, I'm just going to add a little bit more alizarin to that. A little bit more blue. Not too bad there. Now, just get our distant mountains in first. As you can see, they're fairly weak. The colour is fairly weak. So that'll allow me to put another little uh, foothill or nearer mountains in front of this. When we're going to do that. There. Just get a little bit more. Now I'm going to work, let that dry a little bit, and then I'm going to work on my house, the cottage. Cottage. A lot of cottages, they don't have, um, 
they don't have straight edges. They have kind of, they were all, a lot of them were built on Monday mornings. So these cottages, you don't want straight lines. You want kind of uh, almost just shaky lines like this. And then you go up them with a little chimney like that. Down here. That little return there, bring that down like that. Now I want to get in the rest of the chimney. Bring this across. Now again, the roofs, you don't want the roof straight. You don't want the roof straight. You want kind of sneaks down and up. Like that. This is going to be a bigger cottage than the last one. And then we just bring that down like that. And also, when I did the last painting, there's a couple of little returns there. And down like that. Just let that go off that way. Let that go off that way. Your windows in underneath and the door. And you can show the reveal in the door as well and the windows. Like that. When you're doing a cottage, you always make the roof a lot bigger than the front of the house. So that's twice the size as the front of the house. If you do twice the size of the front and a small roof, it's not going to look the same. So you want a big roof and a small front on the house. I'll also be putting my shadowed area in here, like that. And the last time when I did this, I did the roof first, then I put the shadow in underneath. This time, I'm going to put the shadow in first and then the roof over it. Now you can make, that's, I'm reasonably happy with that house. So let's get my bog around it first and then we concentrate on the house. So first, let's clean this brush. Now right, I'm going to go for yellow. Yellow is my favorite color. You can also always have a, a dull painting and just add a bit of yellow to it and it just lifts it straight away. So I'm going to get this, you're going to see a huge change in this painting now when you get the yellow on. Now we're going to add in other colors now. I'm going to take some of the ultramarine blue and with the yellow I have on the brush already, it's going to make it green. So I'll just run that in there again. So there's a little green color for you now. So we'll just try that in here. Again, this is all fairly wet, so I'm just touching this here and there for the moment. Just to make it interesting. So this will dry up here very quick. So it will bring that down there. Now, I'm just going to clean this brush again. And I'm going to go into my, my flat, one of my flat brushes for foliage. I'm going to take in one part of it a little bit of yellow. I'm going to put in a little bit of raw sienna. So if I make a streak, you get the two tones together like that. So again, I'm just going to tend to this wet area. And those two colors together complement each other. Down there. There we go. Now, so we're going to get a few little, little bits in like that. Just to make it interesting. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of work on my house. Now for this, I'm going to turn it upside down. But before I do that, I just want to get in this burnt sienna color on its own. This burnt sienna, fairly loose. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get this color in quickly, like that. Very runny. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it upside down like that. 
and I'm going to drop in this burnt umber which is a stronger colour. I'm going to drop the burnt umber in here. Just there. And then pull, 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 pull. Now that's important there. Let's see how that looks now when we turn it up. Now, the ultramarine blue, now that already has some alizarin in it. So I'm putting in this shadowed area, just there like that. And this will give me my three-dimensional house. Now luckily, the shadow it doesn't have to touch any other paint at the moment. We can make a little shadowed area here as well so that say our light is coming from this direction. Get the shadow of the house in too. Now that's still fairly wet there. I don't want to touch that just yet. So I'm going to work back here with some other little tones of colour. Right. These in here. I'm going to swipe that across there now, coming across the front of the house. It's almost like, like that. Now, burnt sienna and burnt umber. Let's get those two in here. Now this is just, this is a very simple way of painting in watercolour. It's, um, I want to get some, uh, just that little bog, or the, the turf mound in there as well. This is called body colour. There we go, with a small brush. Nearly finished now, so pull that in here door I hope you've enjoyed that those two paintings and until next time this is Harry Feeney with relax with watercolor see you next time thank you